Hello, in this video, I'm gonna share with you my post-processing technique for my landscape images. So hopefully most of you have seen my videos where I've been out on location and I've captured some landscape images. But a few of you have left comments asking, how do I post-process my images? Well, for me, post-processing is all part of a workflow that I have when I get back home from being on location. There are really four stages to my workflow. Um, the first one is to import the images off the card get them onto the computer and get them backed up. The second stage is importing those images into Lightroom and doing some catalog management. Then it's post-processing and then I go on and normally print those images as the final part of that process. Now, if you uh, want to see a video on how I do my uh, image backup and protection, let me know in the comments below. And also, if you want to see how I manage my Lightroom catalog, leave me a comment and I'll try and do videos for both those. I've already done videos on printing, so I'll include a link at the end of this video and hopefully in the top corner of this screen. But this video is really gonna focus on the post-processing of the images. What I do with my post-processing is neither the right way nor the wrong way. As with many things in photography, there are lots of different ways to achieve the same result. So this is not me saying this is the way that you should post-process your images and this is the right way. It's just the way I do it. And hopefully by watching this video, you'll maybe pick up a few tips or find out something new. So without further ado, let's jump on the computer and I'll take you through post-processing a few of my favorite images. Okay, so let's make a start. So the first image I'm gonna process is this one of Stob Doug in Glencoe. As you can see, it's looking a little bit flat, but that's because it's a, a raw file. So um, it just needs a little bit of process in this image. It's not gonna require um, too much work. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the bottom of the develop panel and I'm going to enable profile corrections. So this just fixes some of the distortions of the lens that I used, which you can see is the 24 to 70 there. Um, off the bat as well, I'm just going to give this image um, a little bit of contrast using the dehaze up to about there, I think. Sometimes you do that at the beginning, sometimes I do that at the end. It really sort of depends on the image. So I don't think there's any need to change the white balance. That looks, the image looks fine. Um, nor do I think I need to change the exposure either. Um, there's nothing being clipped or at either end and I've got a good range of values there. So I'm pretty happy with the exposure as it is. I'm gonna pull back the highlights just a little bit. Yeah, about there. And I'm going to increase the brightness of the shadows a little bit. And it's fine. Um, I'm going to also add a little bit of clarity. So this will just be a little bit of mid-tone contrast, just a fraction, just to bring out some of the detail, particularly around the mountain area here. And then I'm just going to, for the tone curve, a bit of medium contrast. This should really make the image pop. And there we go. So I've already done just in a few steps there, transform that image. If I hold down the slash key in Windows, that should give me a before and after. So already that image has been lifted from something that's uh, quite flat with quite a lot of detail and pop there. A couple of minor things that I'm gonna do now. Just the colors around here, I'm just gonna give a little boost. So I'm in the HSL panel here going to select saturation and the selector tool and I'm going to select an area around here and it's going to boost those colors just a fraction it's a bit of orange and maybe just a bit of yellow as well just to make that those brown colors pop a little bit more and um, because you're watching this on a screen capture you might not notice the difference but I can turn that on and off I can see the difference but that's possibly not coming through in the, in the video quality that you're getting so that's just a minor tweak okay on to sharpening now for some people sharpening is a bit of an art form for me i tend to take the same approach for all my images um, i do it mostly um, just by looking at the image and visually seeing how much it's sharpened um, i use a preset to dial in the values that i want now for the benefit of this video i'm going to dial them in manually so i'm going to put in say roughly about 60 i can see it changing here just going to increase the radi radius of the, the sharpening a little bit and the detail. And then if I hold down the Alt key while I select masking, I can see which areas of the image have been sharpened. So I'm going to dial this because I don't want 
all the edges to be sharpened. So I think about there should do it. And then if I zoom in, that looks a lot better. If I can turn that off, that's the image unsharpened. And that's the image sharpened. So for me, that looks pretty good. And I think that for me is all I really need to do for this image. Actually, I've just spotted up here. I've got a dust spot so we can get rid of that quickly. So if I go up to the panel at the top here and go click on spot removal, I'll just shrink that down a little bit. If I want to see that a bit easier, there's a visualize spots down here at the bottom. If I tick that, I can clearly see the spot that I need to get rid of. Just click that and done, it's gone. Yeah, and I think that's that image done. So here's the uh, after. That's what it looked like when we started. And that's it finished. So literally, what was that? A couple of minutes work, a um, few sliders, didn't require much. And then we got this image. Lovely. Okay, for the next image, we're going to post process this long exposure of a growing down in Dawish on the South Devon coast. As you can see straight off the bat, this one is going to require a little bit more work. But first things first, let's enable profile corrections, get any distortions sorted out, uh, and go back up to the top of the develop panel. So I'm happy enough with the white balance at the moment, but I'm just going to give a little bit more magenta in the tint. That should do it. Um, the image is quite dark, so I'm going to give it maybe about half a stop of exposure. About, I think about there should do it. And we'll give it some contrast as well. Quite a lot of contrast, I think. That should do me to start off with. I'm going to pull back the highlights. The sky's quite bright. Pull that back. And we'll lift some of the shadows as well, I think. Yeah, that should do it. So it's um, looking a lot better already. Next, we'll give it some clarity just to bring out some of the texture in the groin there. Maybe about there, there I think. And we'll give the image a little bit of boost for, with the saturation just to bring out some of those nice colors in the water. There we go. So let's have a quick look at the um, before and after. And already the image is looking a lot better. Now, one of the things I want to do, I just want to change the mood of this image ever so slightly. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a graduated filter in around this marker here. And I'm going to use the dehaze slide to actually add in some haze. Um, I do that by selecting my graduated filter and I'm going to hold down the shift key as I do it, pull it down like so. And then if I want to see what that, I press the O key, that brings up the mask. So I can see where that's going to apply. I'm just going to pull it down a little bit further, maybe increase the transition area a little bit. Press O again. So I'm going to bring down the exposure for that area bit too much, about that much, I think. Bring back some of the highlights a little bit further just for that area, be enough. Now, this is where I use the dehaze slider and if I just pull this slightly to the left, add in a very slight misty haze effect, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So turn that off, turn that on. And I think we're done for that. So there we go. And there's the after, the before, and what we've got so far. Now, because I've added quite a lot of contrast and some of the colors on this groin have started to saturate, um, and I don't think they maybe look um, that natural. So I'm gonna um, use a mask again, just to control this area of the groin. Now I could paint that in, but I'm actually gonna use a graduated filter with a color mask. So let's add this in. And I'm just going to draw that in. Holding down the shift key keeps the, the line straight. I'm going to move that up a bit. Press O. I can see. So at the moment, it's going to apply to all the area in this 
uh, graduate fill, including the C, but I want to um, exclude the C. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to use a color mask. So I'm going to range mask, I'm going to select color, and I'm going to pick up my eyedropper tool, and I'm going to select a color. So I'm going to go for this kind of orangey color here, clicking that. Now if I press the O key again, I can see the mask. So it's not quite as wide ranging as I want. So I'm going to push the amount up until I get a much better coverage. That's going to be a lot better there. So turn the mask filter, uh, the mask display off. And now I can make my adjustments. So I'm going to warm it up just a fraction. I'm going to bring the exposure up just a fraction. That's a bit too much. Just a fraction as well. I'm going to pull back the saturation on all those colors. Where are we about? Yeah, about there. And we can have a look at the before and after. So it's just a subtle change. Click and close. I think let's have a look at the before, after. That's looking quite good. Okay, I'm going to go down and do my sharpening. So I'm going to add in some sharpening. Keep an eye on this window here. Increase the radius just a little bit. Maybe a bit more detail. I'm going to use quite a heavy mask. Because it's really just a stone bit there that I want to sharpen. Let's have a look and see what that looks like. That's looking pretty good. And one last change. I'm just going to add a small vignette to the corner there just to darken those corners. A bit more, maybe. Yeah. And there we have it. So there's my before and there's my after. So for my third and final image, I'm going to complete the editing of this groin down at Dawlish Warren Beach. Now, as you can see down the right hand panel there, I've completed most of the image editing. Not really different from the techniques that I showed you uh, from the previous two images, some exposure, highlights, shadows, clarity, saturation, and a bit of a medium contrast tone curve. But I have done a couple of things that I haven't done in the previous examples. Let me show you what they are. So the first one, I've done is remove chromatic aberration. If I untick that box, now I'm not 100% sure whether you'll see this in the video or not, depending on the quality, but there is a bit of yellow fringing down the right hand side of this post and a bit of purple fringing down the left hand side of this post. If I tick remove chromatic aberration, Lightroom does a really good job of removing that. The other thing I've done is I've actually straightened up the image. Now I used quite a wide angle lens for this. So um, I used the vertical transform tool to straighten things up. Um, it's currently at plus 17. If I reset that back to zero, you can see how the posts at the corner of the frame tend to lean over a bit. So by eye, just pulled that vertical to the right there. And we're done. And that straightens up that part of the image. Now, the one last thing I want to do for, the, for this image is I want to correct this spot here. Now, this spot was actually caused by a water droplet one of my filters. Now Lightroom does a really decent job of removing dust spots, but when it comes to more complex areas, it does struggle a little bit, particularly um, when you've got you know, a panel here and a bit of sea and there's some of the seaweed hanging down here, it gets a little bit tricky. So this is one of the few times uh, in my workflow where I actually will jump over to Photoshop. So let's do that now. Just right hand click the image and I do edit in Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. I've got my image loaded up. So I'm just going to zoom into the target area. Now I'm going to remove this using the clone stamp tool. So I'm just going to make sure that that's selected, clone stamp tool. Now I'm going to use a relatively small brush because I only want to do a little bit of this top area first. And if I have a too big a brush, that's going to start including bits of the, the seaweed there. You'll see it start hanging around there in the mid air. So I'm just going to use a small brush, probably from around here. So if I hold down the Alt key, I can select an area where I want to start painting from. Move my mouse along 
Uh, just start bit by bit. And then once I've got the edge done, I'm just going to paint roughly the rest of that white away. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you're publishing this to the web, no one is going to see this. Even if you're printing, it's unlikely that anyone's going to spot it. I think if you had a bit more time, sorry, if I had a bit more time, I'd probably try and do it a bit better. But I think for the purposes of where we were, that looks pretty good. If I bring up the history panel here and I go back to where it was, there's the spot. And that's it removed. And if I zoom out, I don't think you're going to be able to tell that I've cloned that out. So that's the editing complete in this image. It's rare that I have to go into Photoshop to do anything, but just sometimes those tools are a little bit more powerful. So that's it for the image editing. I hope you've enjoyed watching um, me edit a few of my images. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video on my post-processing technique. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this is not me saying this is the right way or the only way to do it. It just happens to be the way I do it. And hopefully you've learned something new or picked up a tip as a result of watching this video. Also, if you are interested in how I back up and protect my images, let me know in the comments below. And also, if you're interested in how I manage my images in Lightroom and catalog management as a whole, also let me know in the comments below and I will try and make some videos on those parts of my workflow as well. So if you did like this video, please do hit that like button, leave me a comment. I really do appreciate anyone who takes the time to leave me a comment. I do try and read and reply to them all. And if you want to see more content like this, either at home with my workflow or on location taking landscape images, please do take the time to hit that subscribe button. And of course, if you click on the bell icon, you'll receive a notification as soon as I post up a new video. But until the next one, I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.